Animating fire is easier said than done. If you draw a fire and then make the flames wave around, it's not going to turn out looking like the real deal and will honestly look kind of strange. Here's a better way to do it. For effects like fire, you should animate straight ahead, meaning drawing frame one, then frame two, and so on, working in order of the sequence, and eventually making it fit back to the start so the animation can loop. Let's start really simple and get more complex with our fire later. The easiest place to start is with a circle. To get the effect of a flame, this circle will morph into a bowling pin shape. Then the top of the bowling pin breaks off and the body of the bowling pin sinks down now shaped a bit like a teardrop to indicate that the top just broke off. Also, when this happens, the sides widen. Think of squash and stretch if you know the term. This stage of the flame is squashing, like a bouncing ball when it hits the ground. Also, on each side of the teardrop tip, a valley will form and sink down deeper. The broken off part gets higher and starts to shrink. Ooh, I just whistled. How did I do that? I don't know how to whistle. The broken off part gets higher and starts to shrink. Now, the animation will need to reconnect with the starting circle. This part shrinks even more, nearly completely dissipated. The body of the fire unsquashes a little. The teardrop tip gets reabsorbed into the blob, starting to get closer to a circle shape again. At least one more frame with the same progress should complete the loop. So this doesn't look like a very convincing fire with how simple it is, but hopefully you understand the basics of the motion now. Taking this a step further, we're now going to start with a more complex shape. Think of it as several of our basic circle flames combined and each at a different stage. Some bulges are just starting, one is about to break apart, and another just has. To animate this, take it one step at a time and follow the same motion as before. The bulges start to form bowling pins, the broken off parts start to raise and shrink, the valleys of the teardrop sink down, and if there are any sides of a teardrop, they bulge out. Think through these things in each frame, and eventually it will become more second nature and you won't have to think about it so hard. I find when starting a new frame, the easiest thing to start with is the dissipating, flying away shapes, since it's easy to know what to do with those. If you get stressed or confused about what to do, just remember the bowling pin stretches up and the teardrop squashes down. Don't overthink it. Here's an example of a teardrop being reabsorbed back into the body of the fire. Next, or eventually, a blob will start to raise up there and become a bowling pin to restart the cycle. Also, feel free to start a new flame blob where you think it would fit, like I started one right here. Eventually, you will need to figure out how to bring this back to the way it started, which is definitely the trickiest part of all this. Once you feel ready to figure out how to reconnect it to the start, onion skin the first frame as well as your previous one so that you can figure out what to do in order to connect them. You probably won't be able to accomplish this in just one frame, and definitely don't just draw between the lines and forget to keep the fire moving naturally. One thing I did to connect mine was have a blob raise out right here that could become the one in red. I ended up with 11 frames in total. Once that's all done, check that the motion looks natural. Make sure that you didn't break off a bowling pin head, and then forget to animate it dissipating, or anything like that. This looks a lot more like a fire than the first version, but there's still more that can be done to improve it. Good shapes are really important here. Some people, and animated productions, use more angular shapes, and some more round or chunky. I don't know if either of these styles have names, so I'm going to call this one the Phoenix style because it's, it's fire, <laughs> and because the combination of sharp corners and wavy shapes makes it look like there's a bunch of funny looking bird heads in the fire. And this one will be popcorn fire because the shapes look a bit like popcorn to me. I'm making a lot of odd analogies in this video, but hopefully that helps you remember this stuff better. Let's first animate a fire with a phoenix shape design. I'm going to work on top of the basic blob fire so that we can compare them afterwards and you can see how the motion translates. When blobs are rising up out of the fire, be sure to shape them like a flame, pointed and not just round. This continues to when the flames break off. One thing I like to do with this style is have the broken off flame follow a curve as it fades away. And especially for big broken off shapes, you can also have them go straight out but become thinner and break apart into multiple pieces before disappearing completely. Drawing these shapes can be pretty fun and relaxing when you get the hang of it. Again, when you have maybe two or three frames left to draw, be sure to reference the first frame so you can reconnect them properly. When you're done, watch your animation carefully to be sure that everything moves fluidly. If anything is janky, figure out how to make that motion more natural. Compared to the simple blob fire, you can see that despite involving more complex shapes, the basic movement is still there. Now, let's do the same thing with popcorn fire. I would describe these shapes as not exactly rounder, but more solid and chunky. They are still pretty angular, but more like how an octagon is angular, made up of flattened sides. 
In this style, when a flame breaks off, you may also include some smaller shapes appearing around it that will dissipate in the same way. Imagine how a fire releases sparks. This is sort of like that. When a flame is about to break off, it can also look a bit like a massive explosion plume. Once each frame is drawn and reconnected back to the start, it should look a bit like this. Now let's add color and final touches. I use a warm yellow as the base color, and then this step is optional, but it can make your fire animation look much more impressive to add detail inside the fire. Draw and fill in shapes with a lighter version of the base color. These shapes should fit nicely inside the base, and I prefer to have them more squished together in the bottom of the fire, and not so many near the top. They should flow from one frame to the next somewhat, so be sure to reference your previous frame and not draw these shapes at complete random. After that, I add a slight blur effect to the whole thing, and by putting a copy of the base underneath, coloring it a more orange or red color, and then giving that a blur effect as well, my animation will now have a glow effect. This is the final result. Hope this was helpful. Here's a tutorial on animating ocean waves, and more on drawing fire if you'd like more on that. Thanks for watching!